Beautiful. Let us begin in a nice quiet seat of meditation. Let the legs be crossed and the eyes be closed. Gazing deep in through our third eye, our most powerful vision, our seat of intuition. And a very powerful aspect of this yoga practice is getting out of the external senses. We've learned so much to rely on our eyes, ears, nose, and throat, or whatever you want to make a song of. You know, but the idea here is looking so deep internal to find that internally there's a vast, vast expanse. And the more true vision is our intuitive sensory perception as opposed, bless you, to our external senses. So let the eyes, let the ears, let all that be secondary to your powerful internal vision. And let's come in on the breath. On an inhale, reach the arms up and high overhead. And just hold here. Let the palms spread wide and let the shoulders tuck back down into the sockets. Lift the pelvic floor, pull the navel back and deep. Feel the electricity in the room. Imagine yourself a Tesla coil. There is no empty space here. You have the arcing of electricity, power between the hands. Pull this power in through the palms. Big inhale. And as you exhale, bring it around behind the back and interlace the fingers. Pull the fists together. The prana, the chi, the mana. Many different names in many different cultures. Lift from the crown of the head, subtle tucking to the chin, long neck. Navel back and deep, flat, low spine. Feel this warming sensation in the palms of your hand. The Tai Chi masters can light paper on fire with their hands alone. You can manifest this power of the universe from the root of your spine. Feel the pump coming up from the root to the crown and descending back from the crown to the root powerful energy and fluid pump, activating the prana in the body. Very nice. On an inhale, reach the arms back up and high overhead. And as you exhale, bring the thumbs to the third eye in pranam. Set an intention for your practice, a powerful intention from a fearless heart, and allow yourself to feel genuinely this intention as reality. Let the feeling to supersede reality. This is a life hack. Allow yourself to feel as though all of your dreams have already been true forever. Take another big breath. Bow forward so humble. Honor the practice. Thank yourself for showing up on the mat today. As it is just to find the time and to arrive here is the most challenging aspect. The rest of this is a beautiful unfolding in the moment. 75 minutes right here on the yoga mat. Seal the lips. Allow the breath in through the nose and out through the nose. This is the Ujjayi Pranayama, the breathing technique. Powerful pumping from the root of the spine, pulling the navel back and deep, and a subtle tuck to the chin. Five breaths here. Let the third eye gravitate the earth. Let the breath be audible with a texture and a rhythm. Allow the breath to inspire the room. One more big inhale. And squeezing out from the pelvic floor. Let's prepare for some movements. Let's charge this body, this zero point energy source. On an inhale, let's come up over our crossed ankles and find the neutral tabletop with the shoulders over the wrist and the hips over the knees. Let's begin with the cat-cow. Inhale, arching the spine to let the heart shine. I encourage the closed eye practice as much as possible in that it helps you to become such a good listener for one thing. And the listener to me, of course, for the cueing, but more importantly, continue the cat-cow with the breath. More importantly, the listener to your own wisdom in turn. You see, you have the wisdom of the entire species ingrained in every strand of your DNA. And as you listen to your intuition, you're listening to the divine architecture that really knows how to build this body. A few more cycles through cat-cow, stack the shoulders over the wrist, dig in with the strong hands. Another inhale, arching. 
and as you exhale, round all the way through cat. Push the hip back to the heel and allow yourself to find a gentle child pose. If you'd like to inhale up onto the fingertips, long straight arms. Shoulders tucked back with a long neck and allow the heart to sink down and through. Beautiful. One more big inhale here. And let it sink deep. Very nice. And then when you're ready, come up to kneeling. Have a seat right onto the heels. Bring the knees together to touch. Let the feet come together to touch. And just find a nice, gentle, intense top of the foot stretch. If it's okay, start to hoist the knees. You might just hoist up an inch or two to begin with. Find a snap, crack the leg, pop. Let the tops of the feet open so nice. And then when you're ready, bring the knees back down. Rise up. Spread the knees about hips width and tuck the toes. Feel the tops of the feet. I'm sorry, feel the the toes reset and lift the arms up and high overhead. As you exhale, take the hands around behind the back, nice gentle camel, and if maybe you want to take the thumbs and push right into the sacrum, let the shoulders roll back, I just got to pop. If it feels okay, maybe relax the head and neck back, see if the throat wants to open a little bit, and then on an inhale, bring the navel back up through center, reach the arms up and high. And as you exhale, wrap the right elbow in front of the left for the Garuda Asana Eagle. Take a moment here, 90 degree bend in the elbows, push out and away, feel the space behind the heart, pull the hands together to touch. And then as you inhale, bring the elbows up and high, scoop from behind the heart. And as you exhale, curl yourself down into a nice little ball, child pose with the eagle wrap. Pull the navel back in deep, tuck the chin to the chest and feel the space come out behind the ears very good and then when you're ready rise back up all the way onto the knees reaching the arms up and high overhead and as you exhale wrapping in left elbow in front of right for the garuda on the opposite side shoulders tucked back and down use the lap muscle to organize the scapula big breath make space behind the heart and on your inhale, scoop the elbows up and high. And exhale, curl it down into a nice little ball. Very good. Hip to heel, feel the space come through the sacrum. And squeezing it all out. Give back to the earth anything not serving you, anything heavy, energetic or physical. Make space for the fresh and the new. And then on your inhale, rise up. Let the body be flooded with this gorgeous breath, reaching the arms up and high overhead. And as you exhale, let the head come to the earth. Reach back and grab the feet. Find the rabbit pose. Take the head to the earth and kick the heels back. And feel this space. Beautiful. All the way through the low spine. Gorgeous. And then when you're ready, release and come back to the child or the tabletop. Shake it out if you need to. Waggle out the tail. Find a long neck. And then when you're ready, square it up. Inhale, kick the right leg back. Bend the knee. Open the heart. Scorpion. And exhale, plug your knee to nose. Take the right foot down between the hands. Let yourself keep the left knee to the earth and sweep the arms up and high overhead for a low lunge. Beautiful breath. Back toes tucked or untucked, your choice. Allow yourself to sink deep into that left hip flexor. Beautiful breath here. And then as you exhale, take the hands to the thigh. Let the shoulders roll back and push out. Allow yourself to sink even deeper down. Gorgeous. One more breath. Subtle tuck to chin, long back of the neck. Very nice. And then when you're ready, reach the arms back up and high. Kick stand the right leg. Pull the right toes back towards the shin. And exhale, fold, Ardha Hanumasana, half split. Flex the right quadricep. Pull the right knee back. Feel the head of the femur all the way in the hip socket. Lengthen through the hamstring. And stay for the exhale. On an inhale now, re-bend, coming up onto the left toes. And as you exhale, step the left foot up to meet the right. Go ahead and heel toe those feet nice and tight. Halfway lift, dig in through all ten toes. Maybe take the hands to the shins for the first one. 
and exhale, fold. If you care to grab the back of the calf, maybe give it three breaths, pulling yourself deeper. Big inhales, big exhales. Flatten the three inches below the navel center. Lift the kneecaps. Feel the quadriceps engage so the hamstring lengthens from the middle. Internal rotation to the quadriceps. Feel the head of the femur in the hip socket starting to splay open the sacrum. Powerful control of the sciatic. On an inhale, bend the knees and if you need to, burst all the way up and high, reaching overhead. Work the hastasana. Bring the hands together in the upward salute. And take it to the right. Chandrasana, powerful, simple. The standing half moon, big breath, feel the connection all the way from the left foot. Maybe add the challenge of the eyes closed. On an inhale, back and through center, reach both arms high, still in the steeple grip. And exhale, take it out to the left. Powerful engagement, lengthen all the way from the knife edge of the right foot. Moving through the right carpal tunnel and out to the middle finger. On an inhale, reach back up and high overhead. Let the hands come apart and cactus. Let the palms face forward and really focus mostly on pulling the scapula together. Make space across the chest, space across the collar. One more big breath here, really squeezing back. Very nice. Inhale, both arms reach back up and high overhead. Exhale, pranam, fold it to the earth, Uttanasana. Very nice, hands down, nice halfway lift. Take the right leg straight back. And exhale, set the right foot down to the earth. Let the left foot follow into a plank. Be strong in plank here, no sagging in the bridges. Allow yourself to push up and over the wrists. And then as you exhale, knees down. Chin chest, slide through low, find baby cobra. Let the elbows stay bent as much as you need to. Push the tops of the feet into the earth. I'm not giving you a good example, come too close to the wall, but I don't want space yet. I feel like I'm gonna kiss her on the back night. Take a big breath and relax the glutes. And then when you're ready, let the belly button come up through table. And exhale, push it back into the child pose. Inhale, round yourself all the way back up through the cat and come to the neutral table. Shake it out if you need to. Pull <coughs> out the tail. Clear it out, that's right. <coughs> Let it all go. Give it back to the earth. And then when you're ready, kick the left leg back. Inhale, bend the knee, open the heart. See, the earth is a willing recycler. As you exhale, let me know of all of our energies, she'll compost them and bring in new. As you inhale, reach both arms up and high overhead. And allow yourself just first to sink into this low lunge and allow the back toes to be tucked or untucked, depending on what feels good for your body. That's right. Really reaching up and high, letting the scapula tuck back into the socket. And as you exhale, bring the hands to the knee, thigh, pressing away. Let the shoulders roll back. This is corrective. The more that we can start to make space across our heart, the more space that we can shine. Very good. On an inhale, reaching back up and high as you kickstand the left leg, left toes. And exhale, folding our Hanumasana, half split. Pulling the left toes back towards the shin. And really feeling the plugging back. Even the left corner in the oblique. Feel this power as you kind of wring out the guts. Getting all the vital organs moving. Tucking them back into their respective cubbies. One more breath here. Let the hamstring lengthen all the way through the ball of the foot. And on your inhale, re-bend coming up onto the right toes. And exhale, step the right foot up to meet the left. Heel to the feet together to touch. Nice halfway lift, lengthen the low spine. And exhale, fold it down. 
three breaths at the bottom, maybe the hands start to find the earth. And powerful tucking back, long neck. And stay for the exhale. And then when you're ready, on an inhale, burst it all the way up and high. Reach up overhead. Let the hands come together and take the good morning stretch. Push the palms up and high to the sky. And as you exhale, take the tops of the hands under the jaw and make like a Pez dispenser. Let the tops of the hands pry back. Let the elbows go wide. And the bring thyroid stimulation. Stretch the flesh all the way to the jaw. Stay for the exhale. And as you inhale, come back through center, reaching up and high. And as you exhale, take the hands to the back of the skull. Let the elbows point forward, grip in through ten toes, big inhale. And as you exhale, have a tug of war, but let the head weight push the head back and let the ears move behind the shoulders. Let the endocrine thyroid system drain from the back of the neck. You might even hear a little bubble wrap. Snapping back there. One more big inhale, really corrective. And stay for the exhale. Now, on your inhale, reach up and high overhead. Exhale, pull the navel back in deep. Hinge at the waist, pull to the earth. Take a big breath at the bottom. Stay for the exhale, relax the head and neck. And now on an inhale, shoot the left leg back, long and straight. And exhale, step the left foot and let the right foot follow into plank. Big breath into plank, no saggy bridges. Exhale, right knee dips to the earth. Feel the obliques. Inhale up to the plank. And exhale, left knee dips. Inhale up to plank. And exhale, knees, chin, chest. I'm going to have to use the hands to support. Try to lay the chin down first and then lay the heart down. Let the elbows drop, make space for the ears. You can walk the knees closer or further depending on what feels groovy for your spine. Big breath in, squeeze out the guts. Feel that tight V pulling into the pubic bone. Lift up from the pelvic floor. Detox, one more. And as you exhale, slap you onto the belly, gentle, gentle down your asana, reaching back, flex the feet, find the ankles. Just use this to pull the heart open, press the knees down, put the scapula back in the sockets. Long neck with a subtle tuck to chin. And stay for the exhale, one more. And hold, very good. Release now, bring the elbows in tight. Right under the arm, right under the kind of tricep, under the lat muscle, and then wedge it up. Allow yourself to find your cobra pose. And here, same thing. Take the tops of the feet and kind of pull back towards the shins. Allow this to make a Nike swoosh through the middle spine. Lift from the crown of the head, but find a subtle tuck to the chin as the shoulders tuck back and down. Use all ten fingers to grip. And beautiful yogi bears. Very nice. Inhale, belly button up through table. Exhale, push back to child. Gaze back, tuck the toes, grip the earth. Inhale. And then as you exhale, push the hip up and let's find our downward facing dog. Support of Mukha Hastasana. One of the better fundamentals in the whole yoga business. And allowing yourself here, take a moment, settle in. But then, once you've taken care of anything that happens externally, step your feet up into a comfortable distance so that the heels can easily approach the earth. Nice wide stance like that looks good. Gazing back, pressing back, gazing back between the legs. Feel the long neck as you look back, and one day you'll even take your gaze all the way to the belly button. Now use the arm strength to roll the shoulder out as you gaze back. And eventually, all of this, and use the hands like an animal. All ten fingers, all ten toes, make that space. And let it all go. Beautiful breaths. <coughs> On an inhale, let's take the right leg up, open the hip, big long line of freedom, and powerful here. As everything peels away, sorry about that. 
Allow yourself to ground through the standing leg and really pressing through the strong straight arm. Let the ribs move under. Remember the ribs are connected to the spine and there's a lot of torsion there. One more big inhale. And stay for the exhale. Now, power up from the oblique. Shoot the right leg back strong and straight. Exhale, take the right knee to the left elbow to touch it. Let's see some strength building here. Inhale, right knee, right elbow. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, right leg up, free dog. And exhale, right knee, nose. Set the right foot down between the hands. And allow yourself to take the back foot down on the 90. Keep the right hand to the earth and take the left arm up high and overhead. Find this side angle pose. Connect the knife edge of the back foot. And then as you exhale, push the top arm deep over the top ear. And if you have a neighbor, you can. Yeah, that's nice, that's cool. I like it. And then when you're ready, gaze over the back shoulder. Power yourself all the way into the reverse warrior. Sink it deep. And then inhale, push the front leg straight. Exhale, tick tock sideways star. Feet parallel, with a little bit toes in, heels out. And exhale, fold deep. Make a little pigeon toe like Japan grinds. Big breath in here. Bring these toes way in. And let the toes have it. Yeah, I like to do that myself, actually. Sometimes the snowboard feet have to be in. And then use the internal rotation from the quads to splice open the sacrum. Legs you got it going on really good. And take the chin under. If the head easily comes to the earth, you can shorten the distance between the feet a bit and get a bit deeper. Also, you can go all the way through, as seen by this alley the valley, and getting all the way totally vertical. You also can get a nice row of dominoes going and fall from there, which is nice. Take a big breath and stay for the exhale. And then on the inhale, walk the hands back out in front to a half lift. And exhale, walk to face the back of the mat. Pop up on the left foot. Keep the right hand to the earth. Take the left arm up and high. And gaze under the left armpit. Parsva Arda Chandra Asana. Standing, revolved half moon. If you'd like, you can bend the left ankle. Since we have snowboarders in the house, they'll appreciate this. This is Parsva Chapasana. Also a pretty nice grasser. Backside here. Big breath, power through the standing leg. And stay for the exhale. And then on your inhale, kick back through the back or through the Ardhashandrasana. Let the right foot come to the earth. Keep the left arm up and high. Let her lunge simple twist. And as you exhale, float it to the outer edge of both feet, gazing over the back shoulder, dancing moon. Big breath here. Allow yourself to sink. And then as you inhale, sweep the left arm back up and high overhead. And exhale, travel all the way back to the top of the mat. Dip the hip and lift the heart, lizard. Exhale, straight man, bow, lunge, cow. Beautiful. And then when you're ready, rebend, step up, feet, hips, width. Nice halfway lift. And squat, malasana, yoga squats. Take the knees out wide enough to wedge the elbows in. And you can flare out if that feels good. But if you want to work the groin a bit, you can put it on snow skis and lock yourself in. Squeezing, lifting from the pelvic floor. Allow yourself to feel it wherever it feels good. You might even go super wide. Although Maki is crazy, my roommate, she's from Japan. She can go super wide. That's just like a little bit. It's like you sat down and we Well, he's from Hawaii. Yeah. The same thing as being in front of you. more comfortable. Yeah, that's good. Well, most, most of those honkies have a real hard time with that life of sitting in chairs. Beautiful breath, lift from the pelvic floor. Let the shoulders roll back. And just let it be comfortable, but try to feel that pump again from the sacrum to the crown. Feel the ujjayi breath, lift the pelvic floor. It's your perineum. And pull the navel back in deep. Very good, let's find our pro bhakta asana. Taking the hands down to the earth, bring the knees up into the armpits. And if you're new to pro at all, make the 
this connection. I see a lot of people learning to crow way out here. I say forget that, doesn't really matter, doesn't help. Take the knees deep into the armpits and feel this connection where it's super stacked. And then just take the hands down, keep the elbows in tight, bring the butt up high, come up high on the toes, and shift the weight forward so that the elbow's over the wrist. Use the hands like Porky the Parrot does, and allow yourself to lift one leg, and then maybe lift two, and find your ball box. Oh, you got it, Grimes. Squeeze those heels up, use the strong hands like an animal. Spread those fingers wide, nice legs. Good job, nice. Beautiful. And when you're ready, option to step or float, but tight room tonight, so mindful of your distance to the wall. Big inhale and exhale gently. Step or maybe shoot back your chaturanga. Big in dog. Nice. And exhale. Back to the down. We're facing dog. Take a moment, settle back into the doggy here. <coughs> step your feet up into the comfy, cozy doggy stance. Wedge the hip back and high. Nice toenail, Stacy. You haven't been painting the fingernail because one got slammed in the door. <laughs> Stacy slammed her finger in the car door and had to open the car door. Oh, oh no. <laughs> It's nice though. That's how oh, cool. You still have the nail. I think it's gonna come off. <laughs> Breathe it up, it won't come off. It looks like it came off right I now. I came to yoga that day. Clap it up, just below the nail. I'm gonna give you a high five to go hot. <laughs> yeah. She came to a handstand class right after. I <laughs> know <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> on the inhale, take the left leg up and open the hip. Find the big long line of energy. Powerful. Everything peels away. And feels so strong here. As you gaze under the side body, feel the freedom. Big long line of power. Strong through the standing leg as the ribs tuck under. Beautiful breathing. In through the nose and out through the nose. Really great. On your inhale, kick the left leg back long, square. Feel that oblique power. Exhale, take left knee, cross body, right elbow connection. Next inhale, left knee, left elbow. Stay for the breath. Inhale, left leg up and through dog. And exhale, left knee to nose. Left foot sets down between the hands. Back foot comes down the karate kid knife edge. Left hand stays to the earth. Right arm sweeps up and high. Beautiful. Find parts of Konasana side angle. Take a big breath, inhale. And Utita, exhale. Push the top arm deep over the top ear. Feel your connection. Let's get that adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. And gazing under the side body. We do activate and stop. <laughs> Gazing back, inhale, sweep all the way back, form of an iceberg. <laughs> and exhale, push the front leg straight. Inhale, tick tock, star. Get a little bit pigeon toed here. Toes and heels out. And exhale, take the hands around behind the back. Prasarita B, shoulder expansion, big breath in. Exhale, fold halfway. Feel the structure. I think of cantilever rock on the top of Mount Mansfield. Feel the cantilever of your arms pulling back the shoulder, supporting the heart. And then as you inhale, power up and exhale, pull the navel back and deep. Make the hinge at the pubic bone. Expand the sacrum. And as you fold forward, feel this power. This internal lift actually will dial. It's the skeleton key to the skeleton, if you will. Beautiful, Lewis. If you want to add now, you can bring the palms together and really feel the pranam. Very nice. One day taking it all the way down and through. Stacy Bear is there. Take another big breath. And stay for the exhale. Very nice. Very nice. And when you're ready, walk the hands back out in front to a nice halfway lift in. Let's exhale, travel to the back of the mat. Very nice. Pop up onto the right foot, back to face the back of the mat. And let the left foot fly, left hand to the earth, right arm up, gazing up under the right armpit. This is your revolved standing half moon. If you like, you can bend the left leg, find the foot, and kick away, finding the chavasana revolved as well. Beautiful breath. 
challenge, balance, challenge the focus. And then when you're ready, come back through the neutral standing revolved half moon. And as you exhale, let it down nice and easy into the revolved runner's lunge. And then rolling out over the back shoulder, creepy the ankle grinds. Try the other hand, switch those hands, and then roll out. If you have creepy ankles, this can be so scary, but it's actually really nice to do. Feel the IT release. And stay for the That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> That's music to my ears. That's right, nice and slow. Inhale, take the right arm up and high. And exhale, take it all the way back to the top of the mat. Dip the hip, lift the heart, lizard. And exhale, straighten and bow. Really nice. We then step up the hips with Malasana. Halfway lift first and settle into the cradle. Take a moment here. Come back to your intention. Come back to the breath. Feel so strong. Let's find this beautiful wrapping situation. Go ahead and take the arms out and around the shins. And pull yourself back and deep here. Lift the belly button and bring the chin to the chest, expand the nape of the neck. Now that we have ourselves tucked in so nice, let's just take our arms and bring the arms on the inside of the legs, lift up the butt and bring the, thread the arms through the legs. Take the hands down, maybe come up onto our toes a little and take the hands right under the feet. Let the fingers keep pointing forward. Can you take your hands behind your feet a little, guys? Nice. And then start to tippy toe out the feet and make a little hammock chair that you buy at Walmart and press, don't buy anything at Walmart, and press the legs. Allow yourself to find the firefly. Beautiful. <coughs> nice. <laughs> Under twin. And if you've got the firefly, good job. Maybe think about transitioning. So press the arms straight, make the space behind the heart. And then you can start to bring the legs through. You might move, use the shin to climb a mountain. If you find yourself in crow, maybe add the ekapata. Louis, are you still with me? I was going to knuckle. Oh. Me too. Nice. If you've got the ekapata, maybe shoot. Now, enjoy your meditative hits. 
Let's see where we are today. If you're new to the game, work with Joa or the wall. There it is. There's cold stuff in the fridge. There's distilled next to the fridge, and a cold tap is filtered. Grab the back of the head. Nice firm grip. And I kind of like let my head hands be in this zone, so they're kind of medium. Nice on the crown, hip over shoulder. Walk forward, elbows in nice and strong. Let the head come all the way to almost somersault. Yeah. Bring the knees together. Keep the legs as one mermaid leg. Press the elevator up here. Press through the toes. Push the legs up. Activate these buggers. Let the feet come this way. Yeah. Look at Oh, you're so... I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere, but that was really good. Really good. Stacy's on my same wavelength. If you have the Pinchamara Asana, work this transition. Take the hands down first. Find the control. Let the shoulders roll back. That's all right, that's your love. You can do another one, Lexi, that was really good. You're so strong. So, grab the back of the skull. Feel it, feel it, feel it. 
Really great. Now, give yourself three to five in the breath, and then keep the shoulder back, but look at your thumbnails. Give me this leg. Squeeze your legs together if you're working with me. And allow, keep looking at the thumbs. I'm the same thing, I'm gonna let you cover, but I'm not gonna let you go. And there's your pinch of my arsenal. And then when you're ready to come down, bring the legs down slow. So Shane, let's see it. Bring those elbows in tight. Let the hands be to the earth like an animal. Press back so deep. Walk the feet up closer for a minute. Now look forward at your thumbs. Give me just this leg. And put me in a leg lock. Put my arm in the leg lock. Squeeze the legs together. Squeeze from here. Whoop, yep, and one more time. Look forward. Keep the gaze up at the thumbs. Keep the shoulder back. And then squeeze the legs together. Very good. Keep looking forward. And that's how we do the bridge of London. And coming back down. Actually, London Bridge is not a drawbridge. Very good. I need to win some drawbridges. Alley Valley, Scorpion Me. <coughs> oh, oh. Sorry. You guys can do this. So, Sianna, what do you do for me? Here, do, do oh, the I cross. Think, I think today okay. might be better. Go, it's maybe find your Scorpion. <laughs> scorpion Pincha. I remember. Cross legs. Now, cross arms and try to grab opposite feet. Yeah, cross arms. Yeah, what? <laughs> wow. Yeah! It's a statue. I've only seen a statue do it. <laughs> Isn't that a maze? That's athletics. No, it's just a maze. Her yogi. She's a yogi. Start off with the intense top of the foot stretch. Find yourself in this modified hero. And then we'll work our way through the earth and find our way to dinner time. You know, the uh, bewitching hour for vinyasa yoga is 8 o'clock. According to one of my gurus. Okay, that's top of the foot stretch. If this is enough, stay right here. Or hoist it up. And snap, crackle, and pop. That's right. And then when you're ready, thread them through or take them around to the sides. And let's find the Upavishta Konasana. So feel free to turn sideways on your mats if you need to to make the space. And yeah, we can face each other for sure. That's the cuteness. Yeah. Okay, so before we get deep in this, and so you inspired me to this show, I found it's such a great hip thing. So if it's really, really tight, let me get you a block real quick. Start just with the breath, lifting the pelvic floor. So the hip being a ball and socket chime. And I saw you do this. I thought this was so cool. So let yourself start to twist first over the left leg, breathing, and then twist over the right leg. Just make it kind of fluid. Big inhale through center. Exhale, twist on the left. Big inhale through center. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exhale, twist on the right leg. Right. And so once you start feeling like you want to go more, take a big inhale, twist it to the left. See if you can your right foot down. Ooh, how's that feel in the, in the groin? Nice. Come back through center. Inhale, bring the left foot down. And then, I'm gonna get a pop today, I hope. And then see if you can keep going. Maybe you can take it all the way into your Hanumasana. Let it roll all the way into the split, where you come all the way under the top of the foot. If that back foot so. wants to tuck under you there. Like, keep the toe coming under, point that back toe, oh, it's close. Yeah, and so, and then feel that come back through. This is why I really love it, because I got a big pop on this side. Yeah, but not having it anymore because they went for it through it. And so, yeah, you might find yourself coming all the way to splits. That's kind of an alley move, too. You guys dance, it's a dance move, huh? Yeah. But, so, ways to play with the Upavishta Konasana. And once you've had enough of that, go ahead and enjoy the nice, nice, Stacey, nice wide legs forward, forward. It's really good. And it's getting more now. It's really good. So mindful now that your hip is a great ball and socket joint. And so the nature of a ball and socket allows for movement. Yeah, exactly. You give yourself a little swivel side to side, give your toes a little swivel, push and pull. 
and you can actually facilitate a lot more space. Find freedom um, in any way that feels good here. Maybe eventually the chest comes all the way down. Maybe you reach out for the feet. Because you can flip the grip. And enjoy. Really nice. Good job, Lou. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean. I actually have a pose I want to try with her, which is the recline with Bhavishta Konasana. I bet your feet hit the earth, no problem. No, they used to. That's one of my goals. Yeah, they're actually well off. Like, I have to sit in the recline with my legs out for a while before they get semi close. This one would be. Yeah. Maybe if I stand on you, though, it'll go down. <laughs> or maybe I'll break. <laughs> yeah, have you seen that? Though? That's the Ashkanga way. Is yeah. You reach up. That's the Russian business coach way. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, ow. Oh, yeah. 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 The Russian business coach way is on the edge of a box. So, like, you know, there's like knee high boxes. Yeah. And they're like foam or something. Yeah. You put your butt on the corner of one. And they push your legs around the outside. And then they put weights on your ankles. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good actually. Like, uh, so that's kind of like our, um, that's our, who's another guy? Um, I can't think of his name. Not, uh, I mean, Iyengar. That's like Iyengar style, but he takes like ropes and weights and everything. Yeah, yeah. there it is. Look, it's right there. But and there so, you go, like, pass, we'll like, like, so like, down the way to the ground. Oh, I, I don't have it. Yeah, yeah. And so, it's wow. really just right, oh, yeah, it is tight though, huh? Yeah. And she knows where it is. <laughs> okay. I need you to push that every day. <laughs> when you're ready, go ahead and rise up, scoot to the top of the mat, hover on the sit bones, bring the knees up to the chest. I want to see your Ubhishtha Konasana upward facing now. Let's see it. Take a big breath here, and then as you exhale, pull the knee, pull the chin to the chest, and let the third eye touch the knees. Come back to your intention. Or even cooler, let's do it like a ballet. Take the knees out wide. Let the arms come on the inside of the leg, but grab the outside of the feet so you have the double ballet. I'll bet you can get yours way behind. My tailbone's too long. That's hard for me. I can't actually. Tailbone, yeah. I can't even do both those. Hurts my tailbone too. Yeah. Yes, baby. Nice. <laughs> wow. Woo. Big recovery. That's even harder than this pose. Give, give me a system this way. Do you have more room to play that? Let's see. It's it. been a while. I think so. My legs. No, my arms are bad anymore. Because your arms flat. Yeah, when you were sitting back. I mean, some arms are bad. There you go. That looks so cool. But the shoulder moves like a perfect candle stick. No, I didn't ask for it, but now. When you're ready, bend them, take them gently back into your happy baby. Find yourself on the earth, pull the knees into the chest. If you want to take it wide, try to iron the spine flat and low. Yeah. <laughs> take, take a moment. Iron it out. Really good. Let's find a back bend here. Bring the knees into the chest. Bend the knees and set the feet down about hips width distance. Grab the ankles and press the chin up, the chest up to the sky. Press the hip up to the sky, I should say. And press the chest towards the chin. Feel this bridge pose. Use the arm strength to tuck the shoulders under so the scapula moves back into the socket. Use the leg strength to press the chin, to press the chest towards the chin. And feel free if you want to hang out right here with bridge, or otherwise take the hands up over the head with the fingers facing back towards you. Elbows in tight to rise up. Find your Kordhadanyarasana, upward facing bow. Powerful. If you'd like to take one leg up, maybe take the right leg up first, pointing. And then switch it out to the left. Feel free still in bridge, that's fine. And when you're ready, take it back to the earth. Nice and gentle. Bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a nice gentle squeeze. That's nice, I like it. You can, can you do the full Chakrasana? Walk the hands and feet together. Uh, I'm trying to do balancing on opposite hand and foot. So hard, but yeah, you can touch feet, huh? Uh, not quite. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was wow. Awesome. <laughs> Possible. Oh. Very nice. When you're ready, take the twisting. Bring the knees into the chest. Let the right leg come out long. 
twist the left knee across to the right side, and gazing out over the left shoulder. Big sublime twist. Powerful here. Maybe make a little length by taking the right hand and push away the left thigh. Feel the sciatic release out of the sacrum. Use the power from the navel to pull back so the spine elongates with the pelvic floor. Twist out all the way through the jaw and the chin. And then when you're ready, inhale back through center. And exhale, twist it to the opposite side. Beautiful breath. Take your time. Gazing out over the right shoulder. Lengthening. Enjoy the opportunity to be one in the room. Don't mind the little footsies or having to brush each other. <laughs> that's the nature of the beast and it's beautiful. We're all cat. We're all leaves on the same <laughs> tree, that's right. Take your time and stay for the exhale. And then when you're ready, Inhale, bring it back into the center, nice and gentle. Maybe make enough space from the wall behind you so you can bring the legs up over the head, the plow. Tuck the shoulders under, stack the navel over the chin, and enjoy this beautiful halasana. One of my favorite postures, I gotta say, just actually in the morning time, if you do this when you're cold, it's like a freebie. You get such a crazy head rush, your body lights up like a Christmas tree. Mm. And you just feel like you ate 10 oranges. It's a really, really good morning posture. It's intense. But enjoy it. All awesome and cloud clothes. And then when you're ready, take your hands to the low back, bend the knees, and press the legs straight up into the sky. Sarvangasana, shoulders standing. Queen of all the asanas. Stack the navel over the chin. Let the blood flow down. And then when you're ready, drop the knees to the side face. Pranapindasana. Your pinning pose. Close off the sound of the outside world. Expand the windpipe. And when you're ready, roll down onto the spine. Keeping the knees hugged into the chest until the low back finds the earth. Iron out. Find your happy baby once again. <coughs> Taking a moment. Let everything settle here. <coughs> and then when you're ready, legs straight up into the sky. Right hand to the tummy. Left hand to the heart. Feel the pulse now. Feel the legs cooling off. Feel the breath. Smooth it out. And then take the hands to the inner thigh. Big inhale. And exhale, press the legs out wide, wide, wide. Point the toes. Fill up the lungs again. And as you exhale, squeeze it in tight to the side body. Give yourself that big final squeeze. And stretch out long. With your shavasana. Corpse pose. Give the breath to the body. Give the body to the earth. Allow this final exchange. Oh yeah. My buddy called me and said he just got a cat named Shavasana. <laughs> that's our cat's name. Mm -hmm. That's Shane. That's my buddy. That's your buddy, that's your roommate, that's your cat. So anyway, my buddy's name. <laughs> Hello. Um, and, and Shane said Shavasana means being in the moment. And I said, yes, kind of. But it actually means something much more fundamental than that. It's kind of a hippie excuse for what Shavasana means. 
Shavasana is corpse pose, death. Shavasana means Shavasana is honoring the end of your time in this body. And such a fundamental understanding because you see all fear stems from a fear of death. And when we acknowledge the fact that no one gets out alive, that all things material are borrowed from the earth, and inevitably we must give it back, just like every breath belongs to the earth, every breath belongs to the body, and every body also belongs to the earth. And when it becomes time to repay that debt, there's no deferral, we repay. And so this understanding that your truest form transcends this shape, this body, that your sole possession that can never be taken from you is your awareness itself. So let the awareness roam freely and give the body to the earth. Shavasana. Slowly begin to reinvigorate now. Come back on the breath. Find the sensation in the body. Three hundred and sixty degrees of perception. Powerful awareness. Never limited by the five simple external senses. In fact, those external senses tend to be less truthful. The eyes deceive us all the time. The mind is based on trial and error. how to build the body. We can eat a banana and it becomes us in a couple hours. This divine technology it is a sensor. The entire being is an amazing earth rover, a vehicle of exploration. You're the pilot. drawn to either side into a fetal position. Have the breath. Allow the blood to flow and move. Detoxify, nourish, and refresh. And then when you're ready, gently find your way back to a quiet seat of meditation. And we'll close our session with the chanting of Om. Three ohms together as a mantra, as medicine, and as a powerful opportunity that we can share together in the vibration of the universe. And if you're not aware, actually, but perhaps you are, the physical um, benefits of ohm chanting are so great that now they're actually even taking kids off Ritalin and giving them a prescription of ohm chanting because there's quite a bit happening in the body physiologically as well as mentally and emotionally. So allow these ohms to be as an ah, ooh, mm, in the sense of the ah resonating from the belly, ooh resonating from the chest, and mm resonating from the skull. And allow this to resonate so deeply 
something inside of you that might even tickle a bit. Hold nothing back, for this truly is medicine. Sit nice and tall, bring the hands to the heart. Big inhale to prepare, Let's take a full breath. Open mouth, exhale. Three arms together, inhale. Ha <laughs> ha 